Hello and welcome to Waylanders Wandering, where today we're going to be painting the latest uh, commemorative miniature from Games Workshop, which is the uh, Cadian Minka Lens. I've chosen the uh, bolt pistol and power sword version, which is the where she's ending up in the Black Library novels rather than the Las Gun, which is where she started in the Black Library novels. And until Games Workshop extract a digit and get some rules available to the girl, she is going to proxy in as uh, the sergeant for my Kazakin kill team. So, with that being said, we need to decide on a color palette for her. Now, we can either go for the box art, which is nice and it's it's fantastic i suppose if that's your thing but i do like to put a little bit more individuality than just straight copying the box art into my miniatures so with that in mind i'm going to paint her up as a member of the napoleonic 60th rifles uh just to give it a little character of its own so if we look at the, our 60th Rifleman here on the right, we can decide which parts we're going to actually take and which parts we're going to ignore from this miniature to translate it into our sci-fi badass. So we'll go for the dark green tunic, definitely. We'll take the red uh, collar and turnbacks, again, definitely. I think we'll go for the blue pants. Now, as for... Minka's uh, knee pads and body armor. I think we'll decide that a little bit further down the line because it's not a decision we need to make right now. So, without further ado, I'm going to go and rattle can prime this, for which I will be using uh, matte black from the Color Forge, which are superlative paints these are so good if you can get them locally get them i highly recommend them if not i'm sorry it's just one of those things right? anyway i'm going to get this primed and be right back with you now we have a nice all over uh prime with that chaos with the chaos matte black from the color forge it is time to move on to the next stage, which will be an all over dry brush with Citadel Layer Administratum Grey, followed by Pro Acryl Bold Titanium White. And this will give us a start for our, I suppose, Slap Chop Plus method that I want to use. So we'll get some. Administrator Grey out onto my texture palette and taking my uh, Masterclass moderate dry brush, which is the medium size of the three you get in the pack, we'll wet the brush, use a piece of paper towel to dab much of the moisture off until it just feels cool to the back of your hand and doesn't really leave a wet sheet. Now using the side of the brush, take a little of your Administratum Grey, twisting it to get it on all sides, use a dry brush onto your palette, see what sort of finish you get, test on the back of the hand, not really much paint on there at all, so we'll get a little bit more. Take off most of the excess onto the texture palette, test it on the hand, and that looks okay. So, starting at the top of the miniature, working in downwards motion, try to hit absolutely everywhere with this administratum grey. This will do two things it will Give your very deepest parts a nice shade. Your higher parts the beginning of a highlight. And it will also show up 
any bond lines and things like that you may have missed. Now the reason that we're doing it with a moistened brush rather than a dry dry brush is so that we don't get too much of chalky finish on our miniature because that would not well, it wouldn't help anybody. Least of all the estimable Ms. Lentz here. So working nicely but relatively quickly we get a nice Let's see if it's off that arm there. A little bit more paint. Take it off. I think that'll do. So we now have a beginning of a highlight and the shade laid in on the miniature. And at this stage, we can have a quick look around to see if there are any obvious mold lines that we may have missed. I don't think there are because this is a relatively new uh, miniature and I'm kind of fussy about mold lines. So the next stage will be to take our Pro Acryl and get some of that on the palette clean the top now using the part of the hotel that was moistened previously we can re-moisten our bristles a little take some of the Pro Acryl Bone Titanium White which is very strong white so you, less is definitely more with this particular paint, work the excess off the bristles until we get sort of uh, this sort of much left on there. I'll get them back in hand, and again, coming in from the top, but being slightly more gentle with our application, we will dry brush this white all over the miniature again. And this will leave us with our highest highlights kind of pre-done for us. Now that uh, that dry brushing has had a few minutes to dry properly, it is time to start with blocking in our main colours using uh, Vallejo Express Colour Paint. For the green tunic I will be using Lizard Green, which is 72.418 Verde Legato. For the red turnbacks, collar and cuffs, <laughs> I will be using Vallejo Express Colour Plasma Red, which is 72.406, which is Rojo Plasma. And for the trousers or leggings, we'll be using Vallejo Express Colour Omega Blue which is 72.413 Azul Omega. If you do not have access to Vallejo Express Color Paints, you can use the kind of equivalent uh, Citadel colors. So the red would probably work best with Blood Angels Red. For your green, probably Dark Angels Green. And for the blue, I will would probably recommend Ultramarine Blue. But to be honest, I like these, so I'm using these. Anyway, starting off, we'll get a paint, a rather vigorous shack in, put a couple of drops onto a dry palette, clean the top a little bit. Because it helps prevent the nozzles getting gummed up and stuck up. And we will come in with my size 1 series 33 brush from Rosemary & Co. And carefully start blocking in the trousers on the model. Be as careful as we can to not get any on anything that we don't want to have this blue. The contrast paint, we want to layer it on quite heavily 
but not so heavily it leaves those horrible puddles. And if you do get any in an area that you don't want it, quite simply, you can come in with the black and the dry brushing again and touch up any areas that you overpaint. But as ever, probably the best not to make a mess in the first place. So I will finish these trousers or leggings if you will and we will have a look in a little minute. With that uh, blue on and dried it's now time to tackle the tunic and again we'll be using the express color lizard green so after a quick shake a a few drops on a palette and my ever faithful Rosemary Co series 33 size 1 and we'll begin to block this in being careful to not get any on the pouches and things which we're going to do as leather work As you can see, this is quite a delicate little process. So it's going to take me a hot minute or six. And remembering that on this version, Minka has her sleeves rolled up, so we will get in there, avoiding the shoulder plates of the armor and the leather work as we work around the miniature so I will do all of this bring you guys back it's time to tackle the next part now that the uh, tunic is finished and most of tidy it's time to come in again with our titanium white and hit up those little odd edges where we got just a little too much paint on and over painted any areas i'll be using my uh, double zero brush from rosemary co for this Again, the series 33. We get a little bit of water on our palette and thin the bone takes any white down to say at that consistency, I think. So making sure we've got a nice point on a brush feel free to use a tissue rather than the back of your hand if you choose very gently come in on the areas such as this piping we've got a little blue on there cover that also where we've got a little green on it Again, on top of these pouches, which we will actually fill in a little bit just so that the uh, colour we use later for the leathers shows up a little bit nicer. Again, with this kind of tie around the leg there, where we got a bit of blue on it. And so that this does, the video doesn't drag on too long, 
I will bring you guys back in when I've hit up all these areas that needed a touch of white on them. Now that we have all that white touched up on the uh, hems of the uh, tunic there and various other places like here on the you know the band here on that and the uh, strap your piston have around a leg there. It's time to do the actual uh, piping turnbacks and collar and cuffs on the uniform. As you can see though, Minka has the sleeves rolled up so we don't have to worry about the turnbacks. So we're just going to do the piping and collar of her tunic with the Vallejo Express Colour Plasma Red. Get a couple of drops on our palette here. Okay, make sure that our brush has got a good point on it. So we're going to come in like delicate areas again. And not worrying too much about how heavily we put it on. But still trying not to get any in areas where we don't want the red to be. We will very gently line like this across the hem of the tunic. Okay, for these more delicate moves, it's wise to keep your hands sort of braced together like so on your paint handle, so this will give you some stability, and also your elbows on your desk or whatever you're using to you know, work on. Forming triangles to support yourself and hold yourself up there. Now, looking at how this red is going on, it's a very orangey, very uh, weak red, and it's not giving me the coverage that I expected, so I think I actually can swap that out for the velvet red I used on my uh, Blood Ravens. If you've seen my How to Paint Blood Ravens video or follow me on the Instagram. So, this being a much stronger red, we will be putting it on in a similar manner. Again, being careful not to get it anywhere we don't want the red to show. But making sure as a contrast paint we do get a reasonably heavy coat on. Uh, as you can see the this side of the tunic is a much richer red than the other and I feel that is uh, a better contrast against the green and the blue to be honest. It's the main reason for changing it. But yeah, we will move around the hem of the tunic and hit the collar. I will bring you back in uh, when it's time to do carapace armour and such. Now that we've got that nice red piping and collar finished, it's time to move on to the... Uh, oh, I also did the red on this scabbard of the sword, so I thought it would be a nice bright contrast to pick it out from the back there. Anyway, as I was saying, now it's time to move on to the leather work, which will be the gaiters, this knee pad, probably that strap around there, uh, all the belts and pouches, um, this leather, I've decided that's probably leather as well, and yeah, so we'll get all those done, but the and I will be doing that in Citadel Contrast to Black Templar and her boots because I want them a slightly different uh, more opaque and heavier shade of black I will be using Citadel Contrast Black Legion which quite frankly is like magic it's probably the best black paint other than the 
Pro Acryl Black that I've ever used. It certainly beats well the other air quotes normal blacks from Citadel. Looking at you, a bad and black. So get a decent brush full. Let's have a look at uh, getting it onto a palette because it's probably the best way to do things these days. Get some of the brush, get to a decent point, get a decent load on the brush, and coming in carefully, avoiding all areas we don't want to be black, apart from like the main boot, because we're going to go over that with a different, stronger black anyway. We will lay in this black Templar. He says, checking his black Templar, not black Legion. Yes, it's black Templar. I always get those two confused, or at least the names of those two confused. And lay it in, nice and careful. I will bring you, you lovely people back. When Done me leather work. Now that we have those leathers and boots finished, it is time to uh, look at Minka's armor. And for this, I'm going to be using uh, Vallejo Express Color Plague Green, which is a, a more sort of khaki green, I would say, and should uh, complement the green of the uh, lizard green tunic quite nicely. I've also gone over those uh, knee pads on the leggings because they definitely appear to be part of the uh, uniform. There's no obvious strapping to hold them on there, so they're part of the legging. But to differentiate them ever so slightly, I've used uh, Contrast Celestrum Blue instead of the uh, Omega Blue that I used previously. So, getting on, we will take a bit of this plain green and drop it onto our palette. Being very careful and using our double zero brush still, we can get a decent brush full and start Putting it on to the tunic. Sorry, the armour, I mean. Very much making sure now that we only get it on the armour. So being ever so careful tip of the brush where possible we will lay this clay green on so I will complete this leave everything to cure for an hour and bring you back in for those last few stages which will be kind of the skin and metallics when everything's had plenty of time to dry and cure. Moving on to the final stages before we do the metallics, it is time to address the skin, which will be face and neck, the two hands and this forearm. And there is ever such a tiny little gap between the shirt here and this uh, wrist communicator power pack thing for the sword. So we'll have to attack that as well. For the skin, we will be using Vallejo Express Color Dwarf Skin. And for the hair, we will be using Vallejo Express Color Copper Brown. At the very least, we'll be starting with Copper Brown. And if it looks awful, we will change it to a different color. So, a few drops of Dwarf Skin on our palette. And that seems to be 
very poor. Let's give that a bit more of a shake. We'll use it. That seems to be all medium and no pigment. So now it's time to shake my flipping arm off. Let's try it now. Much better. So we'll take some of this dwarf skin. Make sure we've got a reasonable amount on the brush, but not so much that we lose control of where it's going. And starting at the elbow, walking towards the hand, we will run down the arm. Make sure we hit the fingers, mainly kind of in between the fingers to give the depth that we want. Wick off the excess, like so. Yeah, now we'll move to the inner arm. Careful to only get it on the arm, not on to the tunic or anywhere else. It's just the leggings that we're quite close to here. Again, get it on there. Have a look. Do we need to wick it out again? I don't think so, so much here. And on to the next bit. Keeping a good point for this little bit between the tunic and whatever that is on a wrist. Put a little bit in there. This can be quite heavy because, well, frankly, otherwise it won't show up very well. Look at the other side. It's ever such a tiny bit there. And then the hand. So on and so forth, the way around the model. And you want me to keep you in until I do the hair to see whether it goes poop or not. I can tell. I don't know what sort of people you are. I'm quite honest. I see myself. And so we get in around the neck there, the chin, around the face. Whilst it doesn't look great at this stage, the dwarf flesh, or dwarf skin as it is, when it dries, it usually dries, it's pretty good. There we go with that. And now for the one you've all been waiting for, the copper brain. A couple of drops of that. doesn't look too much different to the skin. A little darker, maybe a little richer. Let's see how it goes on. So again put it on relatively heavily. So that we get that nice contrast effect between the highs and lows of the hair. away it's just a bit heavy at the back of the head there a little bit there and we'll work away and we will leave that to dry for a little while and then come back and do the metallics before I forget we will do this cable here. 
And to make life nice and easy, we will get Imperial Fist contrast paint. Just block it in because this yellow is so strong it will really pop as a power cable. And there we have that. Okay, we'll leave that to dry. I will have another cup of coffee because I'm an addict. And I will bring you guys back sometime soon. Okay, that skin has dried quite nicely. And as you can see, the uh, hair actually looks pretty good, to be honest. And the skin, that dwarf skin, I don't know what magic is involved in that paint but it dries so much paler than it goes on. It is absolutely brilliant. Anyway, now for the metallics. And since we're doing a uh, speed paint contrast plus method, I'm going to be using the metallic speed paint from the Army Painter. And I'm going to do the silver metallics with broadsword silver, and the golden colors with golden armor. So, Without any more messing about, we'll get a couple of drops of this on our palette. Take our size one brush and begin to block in, starting with the sword blade. That oofa doofa thing on a wrist. And then I'll do the metallic parts on her bolt pistol and the scabbard that I want to be silver. And I'll finish all of this. Off camera, along with the golden bits, which are going to be everything else that I haven't painted, we'll have a look and decide whether we need any finishing touches to the miniature. So I'll crack on and bring you back in two shakes of a lamb's tail. With those metallics completed, it's uh, Time to have a quick look at our miniature and decide whether we need to edge highlight or add additional highlights to various things before I crack on with the base. I will, however, be doing the base off camera because, quite honestly, I think you've seen me do enough bases by now to know how I approach this thing. All things being equal, I do think that I will do some edge highlighting and I will demonstrate at least one part of that on camera and by that I will do a quick highlight on the face so taking some citadel layer Kislev flesh and a small fine brush what we'll do is get a little paint on there maybe a touch of water and that seems to be okay get the excess off on a bit of tissue paper and then we will come in and we will hit essentially the bridge and tip of the nose a little under the eye across the cheekbone a little to follow the jawline around a 
equally a little on the brows just enough to give them a tiny little bit of pop without going too far in the chin the other side again we hit the cheekbone and the jawline a little top of the ear a little bit and that brings out those facial features quite nicely now what we will also do though is we will take which is Bugman's Glow which is a Citadel base paint and we will mix a tiny brush tip full into our Cadian Flesh like so water it's a little bit too colored so I'll take a bit more of the Kisler flesh maybe even another little bit there so we get this sort of color and this sort of coverage and we will try to just come in on around the lip area just to see if we can get that to pop a little bit more if not kind of fill in the mouth the mouth's already dark which is what I really want yeah I mean, as it stands now, it's a little bit in your face. But it is adequate, and I'll use my normal um, edge highlighting techniques for some other parts of the miniature. Starting with grey areas, which I will use Mechanicus Standard Grey. As ever, with edge highlights, I like to use it straight from the pot and give it quite uh, the strongest as I can. So, elbows braced on your desk or whatever surface you're working on. Hands together, I mean, even hold onto your thumb there or whatever. Makes it easier for you and just follow the line of the areas you want to edge highlight like so across the toe of the boot there's that little crease there just hit those greyer areas we can also where we've done the um, pouches and things below the pouches take the side of the brush and just touch it to those things and give it a, a more stippled effect which will give an effect of worn leather on the finished miniature so I will go around and choosing complementary colors a couple of tones higher than what the base coat is for all of these areas and edge highlight everything that I think will benefit from one using the edge of the brush where possible because that makes life easier and where we can't get the edge of the brush we use our technique of hands together elbows braced and moving the brush gently down the area we want to cover so we move the brush not the miniature so i will crack on with that and get back to you very very soon because this video is getting quite long now and there we have Minka Lensk complete uh, I've already uh, matte varnished her hence the uh, very matte metallics turning out on the sword there I'd probably go over that with some Citadel art coat 
just to bring the uh, shine back onto it. And I based her using mostly um, earth tones and a couple of uh, green tufts from Gaper's Grass just to contrast against the miniature. Uh, all things being equal, I think that this... Um, how can I put it? Speed Paint Plus, Slap Chop Plus method of painting is going to be very effective for any of your miniatures there. So essentially paint it using the uh, Express Color or Speed Paint or Citadel Contrast or whatever you happen to have handy. And then, you know, an edge highlight just to uh, get those uh, edges popping. I, the, I, I like the way it's all come together. The highlights look very nice. It definitely fits in with the um, faces and bases mantra because they both barely pop. Obviously there's no back, back, uh, banner or shield but you know it will still work. Everything works very well. Uh, for this project, the miniature and paints, I got those all from Mighty Lantern Games in Bridlington. So if you can support me by buying your hobby supplies from Mighty Lantern Games, there's a QR code on screen and a link in the down below. They will give you up to 20% off all your uh, off the RRP of all your purchases, and they will give me a little kickback for sending them a customer. So we've all win there. I hope you found this video entertaining. If ever so slightly on the long side, if you did enjoy it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Leave me a comment down below to tell me what you think of it and what projects you're working on. And as for the projects you're working on, why not share them on my uh, Discord, the Waylanders Wandering Discord? Again, link down below. If you wish to support me uh, financially, I have Ko-fi and Patreon, both of which are linked in the description down below. But of course, that is not necessary. Your views, your likes are more than satisfactory. I think that's enough from me. I've been Waylander. You've been amazing. I love all your faces and goodbye.